How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is D.H. Thorne here. Um, let me just make sure my microphone's in a good spot. <clears throat> Recently on a live stream with my friend Waylon, um, for a brief moment I touched upon the subject of making sure that you manipulate energy when you are doing your magical workings. Um, in fact, I put it a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more judgmentally than I said. A lot of people that I see online or in real life working magic, a lot of times they don't put in much or any effort um, into like manipulating the energy around them, into intoning correctly, um, into putting their own mind into the right state of, um, in the right mental state. Now, my book that's that's coming out is going to have a lot in it about that. Um, I will be talking about the three primary uh, trance states that you can utilize during magical ritual of any kind, whether it be evocation, invocation, or regular ceremonial magic, whether it's got deities or gods or demons in it at all or whatever. But it's also going to be talking about how to properly utilize your energy um, at least to get you going on it, because not many grimoires um, even bring this up. And I think that's because in a lot of cases, um, a lot of the grimoires that are out there are based upon a kind of superstitious um, set of ideas. Um, it's more folklore that happens to align with certain spiritual forces than anything. It's not what I would consider the true magic, I guess you could say. I don't want to be one of those dogmatic sounding people, but, you know, in various different systems like Hermeticism and stuff like that, you have some inkling of this. And in Taoism and other things, you know, Taoist magic, you have uh, an inkling of this, or if not a very well-developed system of energy manipulation. So I shouldn't just say inkling. I mean, these systems have much more, much more, um, at least uh, obvious energy manipulation involved in them. Um, but in a lot of cases, like the grimoires that you'll buy off the shelves, these Wiccan books, these things like this, um, I'm not really labeling Wiccan stuff, really. I haven't really read many of those books. I shouldn't really say it like that. But a lot of different systems that you'll buy books for on the shelf, they'll literally just be a list of ceremonies that you can perform. They're, they're literally just the grimoire of ceremonies. They're not the grimoire of the fundamental workings of magic. And not a lot of people really even high some of the high level people that i know aren't fully aware of this that is to say they get success in their magic and they're very knowledgeable they know a whole lot about magic they know a whole lot about the history of it they know a lot about the books that you can read they know all the correspondences they they've they figured out who the various entities might be um and all of that kind of stuff and it's it's really amazing but not a lot of them utilize any kind of real energy manipulation in their magic some do but a lot don't um, you know, there's been a resurgence in the last, I don't know, certain number of years, I guess, um, certainly more now than there was when I began in the nineties, um, with this idea of using like Asian and Eastern energy manipulation techniques, chakras, Kundalini, uh, Chi, uh, whatever it is, you know, whatever the different, uh, you know, Prana, all these different systems, there's been a lot more of that filtering into Western occultism. And I think the ancients did understand this. They understand it maybe a little differently, um, at, least, uh, at least in the grimoires that you see. But I think a lot of these grimoires left it out because it was, um, in some cases, it was left out simply because they didn't know. And it was just a, a book of folklore and superstition, really. Um, it was religious magic, if that makes sense. It's, it's literally like an inversion of Christianity where you're placing the goetic spirits as kind of saints for yourself, I guess, would be one way of looking at it. I don't think that's accurate, but that's one way of looking at it. Or they simply assumed that anyone that got a hold of this grimoire was already initiated into whatever tradition, system, clan, cult, house, coven, whatever, and they already had a working understanding of some basic um, uh, energetic manipulation. But it's also more of an, it's not really a Western thing. In a lot of cases, European and Western magic and uh, Middle Eastern magic doesn't really delve much into this idea that you can push energy into things with your own intention, you know, with your own mind. It's more about pushing energy via ceremony and via, you know, correspondences with symbols and things like that. I think it's only really come at least into regular practice that people manipulate energy and magic 
um, more recently. Now, you you may be different. Maybe that's one of the reasons why you like my content. Maybe you're aware of this, or maybe um, maybe because I am not as well versed in the um, the more common you know practices. Therefore, I don't know that this is what most people actually do. But it's been my experience working with people, even people who know what they're talking about. When when I start talking about energy magic, like their eyes glaze over a little bit, and um, and I've watched a lot of people's rituals, and I don't want to mock them because they're they're really trying. But I see them doing a ritual, and they're just like, "May the spirit of such and so please touch my altar," you know. And it's it's like you, they're spiritually dead. There's nothing going on there. Um, so what do I mean? I could get into a really deep discussion of this, and maybe I will in a series of videos. But I, I'd like to leave something for the book, obviously. But my I, my feeling is, of course, that the knowledge is free. It's the work that goes into making the book that's going to cost money. So it's not that I'm opposed to telling you guys things. So that's why I'm making these videos. But um, generally speaking, there is this idea. You know, if you follow Eastern philosophy, mysticism, and spirituality, there is this this concept of an energy body your your chakra system prana and chi and all these different things and that these cultures developed somewhat scientifically accurate um correspondences um you see the asian mind is that the mind body and spirit is one thing more or less it's a holistic system and by boosting the energy of one as above so below as below, so above, you are thereby influencing the other. So if you're oxygenating your body with a certain breathing pattern, you are also, if you have the right mentality to go with it, if you're, if you're doing the right things with your mind, you can also, that energy also becomes astral energy. Um, and you can, you can therefore really um, pump more intent and energy and will into your objects, into your tools, and into your magical, magical operations. So whatever form your practice takes, you really should be looking into and learning how to manipulate your own energy and not just like playing let's pretend. And what I mean by that is a very important component of energy manipulation is to imagine things. Your imagination is 100% real in the astral level. It doesn't take much for it to become real in the astral level. You just have to become aware of the astral of the astral plane, the astral reality. And whatever you imagine does appear in your astral vicinity. It does appear for you. It is there. It, it's it's you know, it's not like a material object where it it suddenly can do things, but it does exist in this astral realm. This is why you can create egregores and servitors and all these other things. They do require energy, some of them, however. Some things don't require much because they just come right out of your imagination. You can create a thought form, a simple thought form of, you know, the shape of a, of a wheel in your mind and poof, in the astral realm, a, a wheel will appear if you are in an astral state. It, it will be there. Um, but to create life or to create potent magic requires a little bit more than just, I imagine a fireball. The interesting thing is in the astral realm, you might see like a fireball shooting. I always say that, don't I? Fireball. You might see a fireball shooting across the sky and blowing up your enemy. But um, in reality, this this is more of an illusory fireball. It doesn't really do what you think it does. And there's no energy behind it. You know, it'd be kind of like, um, almost like in a, in a cartoon or a movie where the bad guy's so big and powerful that if you were to hit him with this fireball, he would just, what was that? You know, it'd be like, it would be like a, a hologram, basically. It wouldn't do anything. And not that everything in the astral realm is fighting or anything like that. I don't want to make that, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to imply that at all. It's just an easy way to, to reference it. So um, you need to learn how to build, use, and activate your your bodily energy so that you can have it manifest in your astral work as well. Um, there's a lot of different practices that you can undertake. And a lot of people you know, will say, okay, you have yoga, kundalini, qigong, all these other things, and tai chi, and all these other things, and they're all very valid. I would say when it comes to yoga, um, a lot of people in the West have no idea what yoga means, what it is, or how to do it really, because all they're really exposed to is something called hatha yoga, which is literally just yoga gymnastics. It's not, it is yoga, but it's not the yoga. It's not the 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 fundamental yoga. It'd be it'd be kind of like, um, oh, I don't have much of a good good way to explain it, but it's it's not it's not really the essence of it. It's 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 an offshoot of it, you could say. Um, it, it'd be kind of like, uh, taking one of the wheels off, off of a car and saying that's a car, 
you know what I mean, if that makes sense. So Hatha yoga is useful, um, but it can actually, you know, especially in the Western hands where we try to do everything to extremes and the Asians don't, um, you know, we turn it into like this really strenuous thing where people can really hurt their joints if they do it wrong and all this other stuff. They really push themselves too hard instead of it just being about relaxing. But yoga really means uh, unity and alignment. I mean, that's really kind of what it's about. It's, it's bringing your mind, body, and spirit into alignment so that your, your experience can be aligned and at peace and enervated and energized. Um, kundalini, raising your kundalini is, requires physical processes to perform. You, you, you can't just sit there and meditate kundalini. You have to do things with your body to make your kundalini rise. Um, uh, qigong is my personal favorite because it's, it's the most, I think it's the most approachable. You don't need, you know, qigong is like tai chi and both are very, um, once you understand the foundational principles of it, um, Although there's, you know, of course, you know, there's a lot of, of um, specific forms and traditions that all tell you different things. But once you understand the foundation of it, most people, if they're intelligent enough uh, and in tune enough, can kind of make it up once you understand the foundational principles of it, how the energy flows through your body and how to harness it. I'm not talking about like the chi meridians or anything like that. I'm just talking about the general basis of it. Is, is very simple. It's, it's, a, it's a way to, to move your body and to visualize and to, and to breathe, and you can really get a lot of, a lot of energy moving. So I, I'm mainly going to be using uh, very simplified notions of Qigong in my book as well. But I will tell you this, that when you're working with energy and you're trying to manipulate it, you have to be sensitive to it. You have to be able to feel energy. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips in this video to get you started, both in feeling and manipulating energy. There's two, two things that are two or three things I'm going to give you to try. Um, now, one of the first things you can do, it's a little, it might be a little pricey for you, but it seems to work for a lot of people um, who already have a little sensitivity to begin with. And that would be to go out and purchase um, for whatever you can afford. It doesn't have to be big. This is actually not a very big chunk of it. A piece of Moldavite. And uh, Moldavite is a tektite that was formed when uh, a meteorite fell from the sky millions of years ago. I think it was like 15 million years ago um, over a certain part of Eastern Europe. And it crashed. And in the impact, this caused what's called impact glass. And this glass has been put through hell. And it was actually, um, in some cases, tektites are shot up pretty much into space and then come raining down and they melt again on the way down, and that's, that's the tektite that, uh, that you get in your hands. And Moldavite's not much different, except it's the only one that's this weird kryptonite green. And it's a very energetic form of, it, it is just glass. There's other things in it. If you ever take a, a monocle, one of those jeweler's, uh, monocle, jeweler's loop, I guess you call it, or something with good magnification, you can actually see um, little inclusions. They're usually like little lines and little little spots of like grains of other substances in there and the bubbles are elongated rather than spherical and you can you know there it is you can you can actually get a warm tingling when you when you tune in you can get a, a warm tingling feeling in your skin um, because there's something about these that um, it's you know scientists and a skeptic would say that's just in your head but, uh, I, you know, I've tested this with people who are semi-sensitive or, or fully sensitive who don't know what it is. And they'll go, oh, that's warm. You know, well, I tested it with my wife anyway. She, she instantly said, oh, that's really warm. You know, that's <laughs> and I wasn't holding it. You know, it, it wasn't a temperature. It wasn't a temperature warmth. It was like a skin warmth, if that makes sense. Like you could tell that the stone wasn't hot, but you felt a warmth in your, in your you know, in your biology. Uh, that's a good way to start practicing. If you can feel that then you already kind of have hope. There's already, you don't have to practice very much, I think, to take it to the next level. But I would say that the, one of the easiest things you can do, if you can't afford that, or maybe alongside that, you should learn to work with what, you know, the internet calls a psi ball or a chi ball. And this is kind of not a traditional thing. This is not something if you went to a monastery somewhere in China that they'd be teaching you to do uh, necessarily. But it is a valid practice, and it is a very easy way to begin to feel the energy in your body. And the easiest way to do it, and I do outline a process for this in my book, is you want to begin by clapping your hands three times or so, 
and rubbing them together for a short period of time. Now, if you're advanced, you don't have to always do this. You want to rub your hands together for a little while with some friction and then lighten up until you're barely touching anymore. Okay. And this will raise like uh, almost like a static and, and uh, you know, very subtle sense in your hands. And then once while you're doing this, you're going to take your hands, hold them out in front of, usually in front of your solar plexus is the easiest place. And you're going to gently, and some people have to do this a little faster, some have to do a little slower, but you're going to, you know, you're going to try to imagine that there's a force field between your hands. And you can see my hands moving just a little bit. I'm already starting to feel it. And once you feel it, you will feel a pressure. It feels like a, an inflated balloon between your fingers, okay? And you can, you can experiment with it. Now I'm really feeling it right now. You can see I'm making bigger movements. I can really feel it. And if you try this, you can actually get a really strong sensation of a presence between your hands, okay? Now that this is created, um, this is actually an energy form. This is a real thing, okay? This is not, this is something tangible that you can work with. You can use this with if um you know give me a second to concentrate so i don't lose it you can take your your moldavite or whatever object you have and you can try let me see if i, I gotta find it yeah it's getting warm you can try to now i'm already now i'm feeling the moldavite it's not moving but i'm feeling this sensation i lost it a little bit it's hard to concentrate doing the video you can feel a movement a vibration in the moldavite as opposed to just your hand. And that means that this energy is entering the Moldavite. Now, the only thing I did wrong there is I didn't reabsorb this energy. It's now dispersing because I'm, I'm a little too distracted in my video. It's a little tiny lost bit of my potency, really. Um, but normally when you do this practice, you want to suck it back into you when you're done. And this isn't like an in-depth explanation how to do this. I'm just giving you an idea. You can figure this stuff out without me explaining every step, by the way. A lot of this is, is tied to the breath because your breath has a holistic effect on your energy body. You know, your breathing is one of the bodily functions that is intrinsic to your life force, to your life, that you can, that is, that is directly interfaced with the astral realm in a lot of ways. Your breathing, you know, as you speed it up and slow it down and change how you breathe can actually affect the energy state of your astral body because it's affecting everything it's oxygenating your blood this in turn is oxygenating your brain brain or if you breathe a different way it can actually lower these levels in your body and that can change how you you act or how you how, how what kind of energy you have going in the astral realm so um my book will be discussing a lot more of this and i'm not trying to give you guys infomercials about my books i'm actually trying to give you some useful tips to try in your magic so when you're doing this, when, you, when you're practicing this ball, if you can feel this, if you can feel this energy field, okay, and you want to bring it back into yourself, remember, everything is kind of related to breath in this sense. So you can kind of fill it by breathing into it. Like, uh, you don't have to literally go like this, but, you, but as you're breathing out, you can actually feel the pressure increase in this ball. And then when you're ready to finish, when you're ready to let it go, visualize imagine and feel the energy field being pulled back into you as you inhale so you just go and let it be reabsorbed back into your body and at that point you know you can safely assume that the majority of it there's always going to be a little loss but the majority of it's going to be reabsorbed back into your energy field and this way you're not losing much you can you can do this over and over so that's a good way to practice. Now, using this in ritual is actually very easy. You can use the same principle to charge various things in your magic and use this to charge the, uh, the circles that you draw on your altar or on the ground. You can use this to charge your sigils. You know, when you're charging a sigil, a lot of people just stare at it, and that's a valid way to do it. You just kind of lose, and you go into a trance and energize. Pardon me. But if you can also feel energy and push the energy into it, that's even better. Now, the other nice thing about these, these chi balls, these side balls, is they can be flavored, I guess you could say. They can be imbued with strong intentions as well as elemental energies. You can fill them with the elemental energy of, of fire or of light or of anger or of sadness, health, harm, whatever you want. Your intention can totally change what this ball is focused on. And this is an important thing, like when you're doing candle magic, what you need to do is not just draw a sigil on the candle and anoint it in oil and say what you want and light it on fire. You need to push this energy 
out of you, this, this, this intention has to come out of you both in a mental way, in an emotional way, but also in a physical way. You have to feel this, this, you'll feel it. You can feel the energy flow into something. And when you feel like you haven't got another drop left, when you feel like you're done, when you know you're done, kind of like when you're doing tarot, when you're doing tarot, you should never be thinking, am I done yet? Am I done yet? Am I done yet? Should I stop now? You should literally just keep shuffling and just keep in a trance state until you just know you're ready and just start dealing. The same thing happens with a, like a candle magic spell. When you're charging your candle, you should just keep pumping that energy in until all of your intent feels like it's left you and you just don't care anymore. You know what I mean? I don't mean you're bored, but I mean you just know that you did it. You'll just know. You'll just feel like, that's good. And because you'll know you did it because you'll be able to forget about it. You'll be able to just let it go and not, not think about it much anymore. You just leave it burning till it burns down and then it's done. Um, so this is a very important thing. This is something I talk about a lot and I'm going to be a little bit more succinct and instructive in my book than I was in this video. This is really just to give you an idea, but you can totally practice with what I just gave you. If you don't get it, just keep practicing it. It's not very hard. Most people that are interested in magic or in spirituality at all, can usually feel this the very first or second time they try it. It's not hard. Most people are surprised they've never felt this before. Once they've experienced it, they, they kind of like, how did I not notice this before? Um, to give you some clues, the feeling's going to feel again like an inflated balloon or like magnetism, or you might feel warmth, but I don't like using warmth uh, at first because it's too easy to confuse with your body heat. So you want to unless you can tell the difference between body heat and, and spiritual warmth, like with the Moldavite, um, you really just want to focus on the pressure and the sensation of like denser air between your hands. And if you have a spiritual eye, if you can really see, you can actually sometimes visualize it between your hands very clearly. Um, more advanced exercises actually are to do things where like you place your fingers closer together and I'm already feeling a tingling. This is easy for me because I do this a lot. And you do the same thing, and it's not forming a ball. You're actually forming a, like right now I'm seeing almost with my, with my literal eyes, I'm seeing like a white uh, ozone between my fingers, and it, and it creates, you can feel a tingling. You know that there's some connection going on. That is a more, um, I think, advanced because it's more precise. You can do more with it. You can actually trace shapes on your hand and feel it from a distance. You can do it from over here. Um, and you can, once you can do that, you can feel the energy in objects just with your fingertips. That's, that's a much higher form of sensitivity. Um, so when you can do this stuff, it's going to take your magic to not just the next level. This is, this is where you reach the master class. When you can start doing this, you know, it's like Reiki or Reiki. I don't know how they say it. I've never used it. I never went under it, but I kind of have an idea of how it works. It's kind of like that or these other systems where you need to feel the energy of what you're working with. When you can do this, you're going to have uh, successes like you've never had before. You're going to be able to, you know, when, when you've learned how to do this, this also works with your voice, by the way. Um, when, you are, when you're calling to a spirit, when you're doing a ritual, a lot of people just, they just say the words. Now, maybe some of them, they're saying it in the astral realm as well, in their in, inner mind, and, and it's just not coming through their, their holistic voice very well. But when you do this correctly, um, when you're intoning correctly in ritual, you will feel a deep vibration in your chest, in your body, in your head, everywhere. It will just, you know, and that's, that's, that's the physical aspect. Then when you combine that with, a, with an astral aspect, now suddenly your entire body is, is vibrating and your spirit's vibrating, your mind is vibrating, and you cannot, it's, it's, if you haven't experienced it, you won't know what I'm talking about. If you have, then you're probably shaking your head like this right now going, yep, yep, yep. That, when you do that, when you're doing this correctly, your intonation booms across the astral world like a giant bell at the top of a mountain. Every spirit in the vicinity hears it. Any spirit that's connected to you is going to be like, what's that? It's, it's, and it's not really a sound to them. It's an energy. It's like an energy wave that, that just blasts like a gong, like a, like a horn, you know summoning you almost have to visualize it that way sometimes just for fun that's what i do is i'll pretend when i'm intoning that there's a bunch of little spiritual villagers somewhere and they're all going hey what was that and the dog starts barking and all that uh you know it's a joke but it's it, it's a fun little fun little exercise to get your mind onto it 
Um, it should feel like that for you. It should feel like you are a God's booming voice in the astral realm that you are inhabiting. It shouldn't just be, hi, I'm such and so, and I do magic. No, it should be, I am the God and devil of this world, and I'm calling to all the denizens of it to come and, and uh, attend me right now. And when you do this correctly, your magic is going to go exponentially higher. That doesn't mean it won't work without it. I, I have to say this at every, every time I bring this up because your subconscious mind will do some of this for you without you ever uh, telling it to it, because it's just, it knows what you're trying to do. Uh, and if you're at all sensitive or at all spiritual, it's going to just kind of, okay, I know what to do. And it will help you out a little bit. It'll kind of pick up some of the slack. But if you can do this intentionally as well, and you can do this with, with uh, mindfulness, you're going to have a lot more success. Anyway, on that note, um, I hope this video helped you. If it didn't, if you have questions, put them in the comments below. If I can answer them, I will in another video, or I'll just answer them in a comment. Uh, but until then, this is the kind of stuff that's going to be in the book. I'm going to go into much more detail on how to do this, or at least it's going to be a little bit more easy to follow because I won't be doing it just from, from the top of my head. So you'll be able to really read these, the, this grimoire, this, this core book of magic, and hopefully um, be able to put it into practice right away because some of this really doesn't take a lot of time or practice to get started on. You know, certain levels of meditation do. It can take you a little while to get to the point where you can hold the meditative state of one of the three mental states that I often use for more than a few seconds. Uh, but once you can hold them for a minute and do this, do, do, do these energy manipulations, um, these holistic energy manipulations where you learn how to breathe correctly and all these other things, you're going to see, I think, a, a big improvement in what you do. And if you're a novice, you're going to be starting off on the right foot instead of trying to read a book and perform these ceremonies that are spiritually dead unless you get lucky and attract a spirit with your subconscious mind. You know, a lot of the time that's what these people are doing. You are getting lucky that this is working for you because you are, you are, you know, you just, your subconscious mind just happens to be tuned in just right and you get a spirit's attention and now you're off and, and you might learn some things. So, all right, guys, just, uh, like I said, give me a comment if you got questions and, uh, of course, like subscribe and share my content. Thanks as always.